Through a strange twist of fate, I learned that the person most people see me as now is pretty much the same as it was in ninth grade, meaning that I haven't matured much since I was 15. Which sounds kind of sad. Probably because it is. So the other day, I had the craziest, strangest, worlds colliding moment, maybe ever, in my life so far. I was walking into my film school, and I ran into a friend who I hadn't seen in a long time because she'd been studying abroad in New Zealand last semester. And we hugged, and she asked me how my summer had been, and I said, good, and I summed it up, you know, gave all the highlights, the old song and dance. And then I asked her how her experience abroad had been, and she said, oh, it was good, I had an amazing time there, I loved it. And I was like, oh, great, cool, it's so cool you did that. And then she added, yeah. 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 Also, I met someone there who said you were her first boyfriend ever. And I was shocked and intrigued. And then she said the girl's name, and indeed, it was my first girlfriend ever. I was so surprised and taken aback that I think I literally had to grab a wall near me for support. It was just this overly dramatic reaction. Oh my goodness! And in truth, the relationship lasted only a couple months. It was nothing deeply passionate. I mean, we were both pretty nervous and awkward, and she was a sweet girl, and we had fun. But it ended, no real hard feelings, just mutual understanding. And then we ended up going to separate high schools, so we went our separate ways, lost touch. So my dramatic reaction wasn't because it had been some sort of steamy, wild, lost love situation, but rather because what are the chances that a friend I met in college in California would just bump into my first girlfriend from junior high in Washington when they both happen to be in New Zealand. Then my friend says, yeah, her school and our school both do study abroad at this school there. And we actually got really close. We ended up doing like everything together. She was pretty much my best friend there. What? Insanity. So now I'm just so curious and I ask, how did you find out she and I dated? I mean, I'm selfishly wondering how I would have ever come up in a conversation between them. They both knew me, but how did they both know they both knew me? These are the deep questions in life. And my friend says, Yeah, well one night a bunch of the girls were having a deep talk and we were talking about our first relationships. And she said, Yeah, he was this really nerdy guy. He was like obsessed with Michael Jackson and he loved dancing like him. And I thought, that sounds like Parker. I mean, how many guys out there are like that? And so I said, Where are you from in Washington? Was it Parker Donowski? And she said, Yes. And then we realized we both knew you. And I am just flabbergasted. I mean, what an insane coincidence. But also, I'm very aware of the fact that my first girlfriend knew me as a really nerdy guy who was obsessed with Michael Jackson and loved dancing like him. And my college friend instantly thought of me when she heard that description. Meaning that it is basically a perfect description of both me in ninth grade and me now. And I can't argue with it. I mean, those aspects of my personality are definitely still accurate. I guess 15 year old Parker really knew what he was doing. I like that kid. Either that or current 20 year old Parker is essentially still an immature adolescent with a lot of growing up to do. I prefer to think it's the former. But you know, either way, I guess it's okay to be consistent as a person. I mean, hopefully I've grown in other ways, but if I'm destined to forever be known as the nerdy MJ obsessed dancing guy, I guess I can live with that. And maybe that's the lesson here. We may change in life and grow in many ways, but there are some parts of us that may never change or mature and that's okay, you know? It's important to embrace and hold on to all of those parts because even if they seem embarrassing or if they feel like weaknesses or shortcomings in some way, all of that's what makes you who you are. And without them, you wouldn't be you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go finish displaying all of my superhero action figures in my new room and also watch some Michael Jackson music videos to help me relax because that's who I am currently and probably always. I'll catch you later.